day. But how many of y'all know Thanksgiving Day should be? Every day we should be have a spirit of thanksgiving. How many of y'all know that people who have an attitude of gratitude uh, tend to live longer, have less sickness and disease, less stressful because they have a spirit of thanksgiving. Yes. Now, how many of y'all wish that everything went the way you wanted to? Amen. Don't you wish everything? Amen. Then some of y'all just be a bunch of spoiled brats. <laughs> everything doesn't go because the way you want it to because sometimes you can't, you're not ready or capable to handle everything that you desire or want. See, we have to come to the place that we trust God that God knows more and better for us, though we don't understand everything, I got to believe God that whatever did not happen for me or what happened to me or whatever the case is, that is still going to turn around for my good. Yes. See, whatever did not happen, there's some things that some of you in here, it didn't happen for you, which you want. But I'm not going to give up and get to be some sourpuss or be all cranky and, and, and always crying about what did not happen because you have to believe that your future and what's ahead of you is greater than what has happened to you in your past. So I have to, that's why I have to keep pressing towards the mark of a higher calling in Christ. In order for God to promote us and, and encourage us and or to move us forth in what he has for us, we have to maintain a spirit of thanksgiving. God, I'm going to give you thanks when I don't even understand everything. I'm not thanking you for the negative situation we're going to get into, but I'm going to thank you because I believe that you are God, that you are the God of more than enough. God, that you got my back, and everything is going to turn out on my and best for me. Amen? So look with me in Psalms 26. Psalms 26. And um, look what it says here in verse 7. It says, that I may publish with the voice of what? Thanksgiving. Would you underline uh, the voice of thanksgiving? And then just write that thanksgiving has a voice. Thanksgiving has a voice. And, and negativity has a voice. Criticalness has a voice. What God wants to hear from those who say they love him is to give voice to their thanksgiving. You ever been around somebody and say, well, I'm thankful, but they don't say nothing, they act like a little sourpuss? Huh? And then, so God says somebody shouldn't be able to testify about your voice. Y'all, I ain't over me over here. Somebody should be able to testify about your voice or the voice that you give to Thanksgiving. Now, you can, you can stay where you are or you can start the process of promotion and increase in your life by giving voice to thanksgiving. Amen. Now, a, a man complained about his wife one time. They were in marriage counseling, and they complained, he complained, and complained about her. And the, and the man, the, 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 the counselor said, uh, would you just write down when you go home for the next counseling session, and then I want you to write down all the negative things you have about your wife. And then he says, and then I want you to be honest and look at all the positive things you have about her. And then he told the same thing about the, the wife, about the husband. Write down all the negative things that you have about your wife or your, your husband and write down all the positive things. Because they were spending more time in the counseling session complaining and crying about and talking about the negative than they were giving voice to Thanksgiving. When they came back to the counseling session, the real, the critical things, they had only the negative things they had was very small, but the list of all the good things were far greater, but they were focused more on the... Negative. Come on, they were focused more on the... Negative. negative, and they allowed that negative to overwhelm all the good things that the person was doing in their life. One time there was a man here in, uh, up here, they called Gold Run. Anybody ever heard of Gold Run going up towards... Uh, Reno, I know y'all know where Reno is, going, at, <laughs> going towards Reno, called Gold Run. There was a miner there that was mining gold, had his prospect, he was mining gold, working on it. But what happened to the miner was that he started uh, complaining about the dirt. 
And do you know something about digging a gold mine? You got to go through some dirt to get to the gold. Yeah. He started complaining about the dirt, and he started looking more at the dirt than at the gold that he was after. And he ended up stopping 18 inches from the biggest gold mine find in, in, in California history. He, he stopped 18 inches because he kept looking at the dirt and he just gave up on his mind, sold it to somebody else, and all they had to do was dig 18 inches. I'm going to tell you, some of you are 18 inches away from something major happening in your life. But it's not going to happen if you focus on the negative. All of us have had negative things happen in this year and in the years past, but the good things are far outweighing everything else. Look what it says here with me also in your Bible to the book of Psalms 95. Psalms 95. Psalms 95. Mm, mm, mm. Come this far without a Bible. Not Psalms 95. Are you there? Psalms 95. Look what it says in Psalms 95. It says, Oh, come and let us sing unto the what? Lord. And let us make a what? Joyful. A joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Can I just ask anybody in here, is he the rock of your salvation? Amen. To the rock of our salvation. Then look what it says in verse 2. And let us, which you circle the word us, and let us come before his presence. Let us come before his what? Presence. With what? Thanksgiving. Put brackets around. With thanksgiving. And make a joyful noise unto him with songs. Amen. In other words, he said, when we come to him, let's come to him. Let everybody know. Let everybody know. With the voice of thanksgiving. When you come before him, look what it says. When you come before him with thanksgiving, make a joyful noise. I just want to know, do I got any joyful people here today? Somewhere when you get up in the morning, you might not get out to bed as quick as you used to get out to bed. Hello, somebody. You might not can bend over as fast as you used to bend over, whatever whatever the case is, but when, listen to me, at least you're getting out to bed. Yeah. At least you still got something to work with. Yeah. And when you get out with Thanksgiving in the morning, you get up in the morning just thanking him in the morning, I just tell you, your day will go a lot better than when you get up out to bed, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta go to work. Well, you, you may not have to. Maybe we can see you can get let you, laid off. Instead of saying, thank God I got a job. Thank God promotions in my life. Thank God increases coming my way. Thank God that God's on my side and I'm just going to have a joyful day today. I'm just going to give voice to thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Now look with me also in your Bible, in, in your Bible to the book of Psalms 100. Psalms 100. And here we go again. I just want you to notice how it keeps talking about making noise. People should know that you are excited about God. You know, I know there's some people, they say, well, I don't know about all that, you know, excitement and all that enthusiasm, but you need to, people need to know, man, you are grateful. Yeah. Things could be a lot worse, couldn't they?